amazing host and host and he's gonna have many more amazing people on his show yeah. and I just hope that you guys grow with him on his journey and you know we never know how big this is gonna get so yeah. let's just see where you take this take this juice to an oh 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 all right kale ke tuka mo le ke tuka mo le le dipino ke na le ngwa ga tsa tharo ke betsa comedy marapo video la me ke go felo ke batla go tshona le tempo ke batla go tshona khalefo ke spana ka tshata ke tindo 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 ya tindo ya tindo FM Party and Gage Road. Oh man, some B-Dub music, blue, black and white, baby. Dej, uh, Dagizu. That's DJ Dagizu. Featuring Fatos with the track titled Ngoma Yarira. And right before that, I gave you Purple Disco Machine. Uh, featuring Karen Harding with the track titled La Four Days. Getting you and I to A12 where I should say Gab City, B-Dub, Africa, the rest of the world. Good morning. And welcome to the Juice 2.0. Your favorite show. Now on the count of three, Juicy. One, two, three. Juicy! I'm still alone in this thing. I'm still <laughs> alone in this thing, but it's okay. It's okay. I want to appreciate you so much for stopping by. You're amazing. And then the second thing to do on the Juice 2.0 as soon as we start is to go to your comments and check out who the 3.3 thousand subscribers are saying and let you know that I appreciate you guys doing what you're doing. Before we get to the guest who's in the building, let's check out who's been saying what on the Juice 2.0's comments. Ooh. All right, let's start on the video that we did with Dr. Clamelo. Big shout out going out to Dr. Stralo, by the way. Uh, there's a message over here from Mamsi Babe. Mamsi Babe simply said, beautiful marble eyes, Dr. Yeah, she's got beautiful eyes, for real, for real. And then on the Wame John video, Ambrosia. Hi, how you doing, Ambrosia? Thank you very much for that message. Uh, the comment, rather. The editor doing the things at 15.43. To 15.49 fire emojis and uh that's tabs right there <laughs> bitch are gonna are you gonna put your picture on you know so that people know who did what on this no no it's not gonna happen okay cool cool whatever and then on the william last krm video i have my boat there what's going on my boat there you say big up krm thanks mac g for the video okay i don't know what that means but there's a reference to mac g and then on the palesa mulefe video uh, I have a ritumetse choco. How you doing? You simply said, wow, with the love emoji. And I'm moving right along to the Tsepan Khan video. Not too sure how many views we have on this one. Almost 6,000 views. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for doing that thing that you do with your fingers. You know, clicking on it and then enjoying the whole video. I have a Lisa Rafapa. Lisa, how you doing? Watching from South Africa, you said... And my friend also thinks Dali Wonga is her husband. Yeah, a lot of crashes going around everywhere. It's a crash. It is what it is. Sell out. On Scoop with Kim. There's a message over here that says, Great stuff. We should like to add your music on our blog. Real music hype. Oh, I'm actually seeing that for the first time. But it's a lot of things going on on the Juice 2.0. Thank you for your comments, and there's more. They're calling you Mac G because you are from Kumakwani, <laughs> remember? They're saying Mac G or Kumakwani. <laughs> Guys, go easy on me. All right, without further ado, she's in the building. You're Miss Botswana 2020, um, 2010, that is. And then you're Miss, Bo Miss World runner-up 2010 as well. I need you to put your hands together and help me welcome this beautiful... <sighs> yo. <laughs> this beautiful... Yo. This set, yo. Oh <laughs> Emma Warriors is in the building. <laughs> yo, I, I, that's what I do when I'm nervous, though. <laughs> that's what I do when I'm nervous, though. Well, hi. Good hi. morning. How you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm great. So you are here and it's something that we have long wanted to do. Yeah. But... For what it's worth, mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a long time. I think we started speaking about this, what, a year ago? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's been some time. Uh, I just had to fly across the seas to get here. Yeah. <laughs> and you did that for the gist of, oh, man, I must mean everything, don't I? Oh, no, not just for you. But, I mean, <laughs> I happen to be here, so I let you know. <laughs> yeah, you let me know. You know what, TK, I'm in the country. Let's do this. Let's do that. You're appreciated for doing that. For your time, you could be doing a lot of things. But you decided, you know what? Let me go chill with TK. So how have you been, Emma? Oh, wow. I have been, I have been great. Yeah? I've been really, um, really blessed. Yeah. So much gratitude. Um, I've been wonderful. You look amazing. Thank 
you. By the way, you look Thank really you. amazing. There's a message over here that came on my my uh, flyer on Instagram, uh-huh. right? This young lady who you also replied to, uh-huh. she had said, I can't wait. Emma was in the public eye then vanished. Mm. And then she also goes on to say, I always wondered what she's doing, so it will be nice to listen to her conversation, to your conversation. Yeah, I requested that, blah, 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 blah. Mm. But the best part of that is that there's a sentiment that says, Emma vanished from the public eye. Is I that did? true? Is that it? And it's like, what? you tell me. Did You're, you? Did? I, did I? Um, I don't know. Hey, I think by virtue of me having not been home right, this right. past... Wow, it's been 11 years now. Hey, it's this, this world. I, I'm getting old. Yeah. Ah, hope I don't look old, though. I'm but, not agreeing with you, but you know. Um, yeah, I, I've been um, just really kind of uh, focusing and I had to kind of pivot out of that limelight or that Miss World um, yes. kind of stance because, you know, I had to plan ahead, think about what I wanted to do in my life. Um, I went back to school, so that's why I was missing for some years because I was a student again. Right. Um, so I went back to work. Um, back to school and then to work and then back to school again for my masters. Right, right. And that takes a couple of years. So in that time, I think I was just really focused on understanding right. exactly what I want to do, what impact I want to leave, what yes. career I want to start, uh, what my profession should be, all the questions that you have as like a twenty-year-old, I guess. So that's what I was trying to submit myself, and I think I did that. But I don't really think I. I mean, I don't really think I left the public eye yeah, per se. I think well, vanished people from it. vanished from it. Yeah. I'm just hardly home. So the few times that I come home, I don't really announce it. I come home just to see yeah. my family. I don't come home to like go to events or like host things or do activities. And then that's activities. it. Until that's the next it. time you have to go back out. And- exactly, exactly. But when I'm here, I always just try to let people know that I'm here. Yeah. They'll see my posts or my stories. I know my Instagram is uh, private and it's private for a reason. <laughs> but I try always just let it be known that Someone I'm Someone was actually complaining that, oh man, her Instagram is private. I will yeah. not, I will not, I will not, you know, point any. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're here, man, because you're in the country. Then then we can also just catch up with everything that you've been going through, yeah. everything that you've been doing. But let's take you back a little bit to this time right here. Uh, there it is. Swana, you have 30 seconds under the spotlight. Being Miss World means being the pillar, the statue, the backbone, and the mirror image to foray femininity, strength, power, courage, and above all, love. I believe I possess these qualities, and I believe I can be that mirror image. Being Miss World means being that image for women all across the world, for women, children, even men. And I do strongly believe that I have that passion. Thank you. literally tearing up you're gonna mess up my makeup why did you do my that? bad my bad <laughs> um and you don't have any tissues in here guys 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 run around run around there's a yeah, oh my this, gosh you know um, please you know that is actually and you will not believe it but that is the first time i have heard that in 11 years is that whoa i've never watched the miss world pageant since you know 2010 yeah, i've yeah. never heard what i said oh thanks um thank you so that is the first time and it makes me you know when you hear yourself, you always like, oh, like is that me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, now such a baby. Oh my goodness, I sound like a baby, but here so, we are. Yeah, clearly. I was going to ask you how this makes you feel, but clearly we already, we already see how you that makes see you feel. Oh, waterworks. <laughs> oh, the waterworks are speaking, water words. I don't and even I'm so know that we have that on camera. Like, oh, yeah. so precious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was, I, I didn't even think I would make it that far, you yeah. know? I, um, I always tell people, like, I was at the back of the line um, on stage and Miss uh, Bahamas was in front of me and you know you have to be on that stage for so long yes. we, our heels were killing us and we were like girl let's just sit down because we're not <laughs> even gonna make it like who are we fooling yeah. and so I was actually sitting down when they announced like the top I think it was top 10 at that point or top 30 whatever it was I forgot right, really right, right. Um, I was sitting down my shoes were off I was in the back no one could see me so I had to quickly like put my shoes on oh like stand gosh. up people Shucks. were like get up get up <laughs> So yeah, that was that's the backstory. I didn't even think. It's it's crazy because then the words you were nineteen years old. I was nineteen. Nineteen years old. Yeah. How does a nineteen year old speak so fluently at that age? And the second question is, do these words? I hope you remember the words. Mm-hmm. Do they still resonate with how old you are now and the woman that you've become? Um. So I mean, one to your first question, <laughs> I I you know I I was raised by amazing women my mom and my aunt and obviously my dad was there awesome and they used to always hound on me about educating myself reading being articulate being you know comprehensive about what's going on in the world um even before miss world happened right, um right. and then i should also say i had a really great coach 
Um, Melanie Frika was my coach. Big um, shout out, big shout out. Yeah, so she she really haunted me for a long time. I had um, so many training lessons with her on how to speak, how to walk, how wow. to talk. Um, she, she, you know, she, yeah, definitely did her thing. So yeah, that's yeah. where I got that from. And do those words still resonate with me? I mean, of course, to a certain level. I was in a different phase of my life then. Um, I think they resonate in maybe different ways yes, for me. Yes, uh, maybe yes. not in exactly the same way it did back then. Back then, yeah. But of course, yeah, of course they still do. It's, it's, it's a lot of things that you said in that, and we're going to dissect it throughout the whole show. And we have you for 30, 40 more minutes. So it's going to be teary, obviously, oh because <laughs> like, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but there's this one amazing thing about your life story, from the pageantry to who you are now. And I thought, look, Apples really don't fall too far from the tree, yes? And oh, I say this yeah. because your mom was Miss Botswana uh, 1978. 1978. Yeah. 32 years later, that was you. Yep. I- I'd never believed in that phrase before. But when I heard your story, I was like, yeah, apples really don't fall too far from the tree. They don't. What do, you, what do you make of that situation? How did it make you feel? And in the family as well, that your mom would be Miss Botswana. Mm-hmm. And then 32 years later, you are taking the crown as well. I mean, it's really surreal. I actually don't think I knew that until I entered Miss Botswana. And she was like, oh, I used that's to be Miss wild, Botswana. And I was like, wild. oh, stop lying, mom. And she's like, I really did. And I was like, oh, gosh. So, um, you know, when I went into it, um, my mom started Miss Botswana and she went into it by virtue of just, you know, having to be a placeholder. Yes, right? She yes, was, there was yes. no, not enough girls to participate back then. Oh. Um, my grandmother was part of BCW. So they were like, hey, Tepo, just come in and do this. Yeah, yeah. And so she, she won her regionals and she went on and she's like, oh my gosh, now I won. What do I have to do? And then she went on to, um, back then, I guess they had like regional yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then she became Miss Botswana and she was also wow. just like, I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> um, so that, I think the same thing happened with me where I was asked to just, you know, hey, we're short on girls. Um, at the time, it was uh, Mpo Frab. She lives in Nigeria now. Okay. Yeah, so she she headhunted me and she said, you have to come in, like, do Miss Botswana. I was like, what's the prize? And she's like, this <laughs> what's the, the, what's the prize? <laughs> I, need, I need that money. I need that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I learned a lot about what Miss Botswana means during that time. I, You know, I've not really actually Miss Botswana, but Miss World. Miss World, yes. yeah. So the yeah, first time I yeah. entered when Sumeya won... Um, I was still a bit rusty I won't lie I was really just doing it Because I wanted the prize Right, right And then right. I had to really reflect And understand what Miss World was What its mission was What its stance was And that's what Made me come back the second time I like that Yeah It's a beautiful story And you're hearing it On the Juice 2.0 At 824 on the Juice 2.0 Please speak to her On 14962 That's the SMS line Call her on 3956962 and if you want to WhatsApp me, plus 2673956962, do that as well. In case your frequency is not working, www.gabsfm.com is where you can find us. And our Twitter is also our live. Check me out at TK Dimples. Drop whatever you can. I'll read it out. And then we'll have a chit chat about it. Here's some music from Posibina, DJ Kuchi Toro, one of my favorite tracks. And on the flip side of that, we're back with the queen. <laughs> 2.0 and we're chilling with Miss Botswana 2010 and Miss World Runner Up 2010. Swana, you have 30 seconds under the spotlight. Being Miss World means being the pillar, the statue, the backbone, and the mirror image to foray femininity, strength, power, courage, and above all, love. I believe I possess these qualities and I believe I can be that mirror image. Being Miss World means being that image for women all across the world. For women, children, even men. And I do strongly believe that I have that passion. Thank you. United. Alright, so so they cheated on you, right? They cheated you on this one. <laughs> Wait, how what does, was, what was how the does, question though? I, it only I, I don't says, remember the question. Why was yeah. the question? I think it was, uh, why would you be Miss World? Or what oh, yes, yes, yes. Because the usual, just, the usual mm-hmm. question. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, nah, the United <laughs> States, you didn't have taken this. You must have felt the same way. Um, You know, I a lot of things get into my Like, people told me I was 30 seconds on the dot. Yes. Like, yes. I didn't know that. I, I didn't even, because I told you, I didn't think I was going to get there. Right, so I didn't have right. time to practice anything. Right. Um, But, you know, I'm, I'm really close with the Miss World family. Julia Morley, who's the chairwoman of Miss World. Dope. Um, she's like a she's like a grandma to me, you know. Yeah, yeah. And over the years, I've been helping out with Miss World. I travel traveled with them sometimes. We we'll go ha- help out at um, the yearly uh, event. Yes. And you know, I I I've gotten a few <laughs> you, hints you know, that 
things, you know, weren't as, weren't what, as uh, yeah. what they wanted. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, because the world is always saying like Ju- Julia is really when she takes a fonding and a liking to you, she yes. she really holds you closely and tightly. Right, right. Um, and it's been eleven years, and there's a very few girls who are still really. You know, in contact, I can call her right now and she'll pick up and she'll wow. be like, "Hey, Em, how are you?" Wow. Um, and so I think that is also kind of a message. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. That you know, she's holding me close. I'm not a winner, but she's still holding me close. Um, yeah. And that I also was the first woman ever to be contracted by Miss World uh, to travel with the Miss World as Look a runner up. That. After that, that, you'd go home as runner up. So you don't really. They don't you know, really get you back you on don't anything. Really get you back, yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I started that trend that is continuing till today. You're such a joyful B Dub. You're such a joy for me personally because then your history is that you have raised the blue, black, and white. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's been celebration about this and that about your life, but what your focus, at least, at least, what pageantry for you was, and hopefully might still be about, was bringing the voice of women to the forefront, mm-hmm. right? Why is that such an opinion to hold for you? Um, cause I'm a woman. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Duh. I'm a woman. And, right. you know, I think right now where we are in, 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 in history or in the world, um, women have, you know, we, we, the fight is not over, but we've won, you know, kind of in terms of equality, yeah. in terms of, um, kind of the, the inequalities that come for women. We fought them. We've gotten to that, to that point where we are now. Um, and it was very important for me then 10 years ago, or 11 years ago, um, to, to hold true to that, to to really resonate with pushing the women's movement forward in right. one way or the other. And obviously, I'm not like out here being the women's suffrage movement, but in my small way, I could have made an impact. And the way I made that impact was by being Miss Botswana, by being Miss Pearl, ah. by traveling, yes. by learning, by meeting other women in different <coughs> countries, um, hearing the issues that we as women have as a collective that are actually universal. Right. Um, and fighting for just universal equality of women in a way. Um, and I think that's what I kind of, you know, when I went back to school, I decided to do international affairs yeah, yeah. Um, and economic development so that I can understand exactly what kind of binding constraints in the economy um, are really a pressure to women and how we can kind of get over that for growth um, and not just economic growth, but economic growth via the way of empowering women. Um, like and so that. that's why that's I what like I that. studied in my undergrad uh, or my bachelor's. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it's pretty much it's pretty much something that I really, really vouch for. Yeah. And then the next question would be that I saw pictures of you and the current Miss Botswana, Palesa Mulefe. Oh, my right? baby. Right. Right. Yes. Right. And you guys looked amazing. I think it was you, her and other Miss Botswana's previous uh, at some point. I know you're taking so many pictures. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but listening to you now and having a conversation with you now, I cannot help but remember the chat that I had with Balesa mm. in the building. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you guys share some form of personality similarities to some extent? Of course, you know, when I, um, last year when I, you know, I, I told the organizers at the time yeah. that I would like to be a part of, of Miss Botswana and something in me, you know, I'm, I'm a bit older now. I'm right. a bit settled in my... Wait, how old myself. are you now? I'm 32. 32? Man, you're still young. Hi. You out here looking twenty, look out here twenty three, out here looking twenty three. You know what I, I mean? know, I know. I was actually I met a nineteen year old girl the other day, and she's yeah. like, "You're not thirty two, you're twenty. I was like, "Right, Thank right." You, but no. Do young boys try to hit on you? All the time. All the time. All yeah, the time. Well, hey, yeah. it is what it is. Um, it is fine. Uh, when I'm a little bit older, I'll think right, about right. being a cougar, but not now. Um, so no, me and Palissa, you know, I, I wanted to join because I wanted to kind of take Miss Botswana in a different direction. I'm tired of being honestly the only <laughs> woman from Botswana apart from Mpule who is placed at an international pageant, yes, you know? Yes, yes, And I mean, yes. like, I'm sure there's lots of women who've placed at different pageants around the around the world. Yeah. But at the biggest ones in Miss World and Miss Universe. And I said, guys, I'm tired. I want to pass the baton. I want to now, like, when I come home, I want people to stop recognizing me, not in a bad way, but I want someone to take that over from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why I was really headstrong in being there. And then I saw Palissa's uh, interview because I was part of the judging panel from the onset. Amazing. Um, and I was like... She something's there. I want yeah. to see her in person, yeah. and then yeah. I did, and she was just breathtaking. And I saw a lot of myself in her. I like that. And I was like, "You remind me." So, I, she can even tell you. I tell you, you remind me so much of myself when I was at your age. That's what, that's what I, I thought. Like, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. And then a conversation between you. How does it sound like? What do you mean? Uh, you oh, talking, me and, yeah, talking and, to me again? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, let me rephrase. Okay. My bad. A conversation between you and Palissa. Uh-huh. How does that go? What are you guys talking about? Oh, wow. I'm honestly, I'm like her big sister. So I um, I kind of 
ground her in in some ways. I'd be like, don't forget to do this, don't forget to do that. Right, right. Um, as you're, you know, moving forward, make sure that you're setting up yourself yeah. for success. Make sure, you know, as you're becoming more successful, make sure that you are having a savings potential. Save your money. You know, I'm really ah, giving her like these life lessons that you're that person. Yeah, I, I'm that person. I mean, sometimes <laughs> she's like, oh, you always remind me this, Emma, and I'm like, I'm your big sister for a reason. You've got to do it, yeah. 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 Um, so I just, I always remind her in those ways, and I also just motivate her and give her love and let her know that she's loved she's cherished um, and that I'll always be here for her mm. there for her um, mm. so yeah that's that's how it is I like that there's so much to talk about as I always say from the history to you being a startup operator yeah for a tech company yeah it's crazy know, like so in your own words <laughs> in, in your own words in your own words you are a jake of all trades and a master of all maybe yeah Yes, I actually am. Uh, but I mean, for my position in, in the role in the company I'm with yeah. um, and in my career, I kind of am. I have to kind of know a little bit of everything. Um, so I'm in the startup world. I'm in tech. Yeah. And as uh, operations head, I'm a director of operations. Dope. It means I have to know everything. I have to know everything from the back end, the front end, from UX to UI, from customer success to experience. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, you, you, what? Who? UX, UI. <laughs> it's the user experience and user interface. So, oh, dope. Anyone yeah. of you guys know that? Any? No, no. Oh. I was like, well, UX, you. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, yeah, so that's why we have you do, doing all of that. Exactly. Right. I, I kind of have to know everything. And I, I'm like the CEO's right hand. So um, I have to make sure the business is operating, you know, efficiently, successfully, seamlessly, frictionlessly, uh, and making sure that our product is in a market and it's it's being used. Right, and, right, right. Um, that we are making revenue. <laughs> I like that. One life part of your life mm -hmm. that I've never seen in life. I say life a lot. Life, life, life. <laughs> How, how how is it that we have never really seen your love life ever? ever? <laughs> so the people were waiting for this one. Oh, I knew they're like, ah, let's just talk about Miss Botswana. It's fine. Let's talk about startup. It's fine. Let's talk about <laughs> tech. It's fine. But Emma, yes, it's crazy. I looked in our search. You look high and, search, and low, and you're not gonna find nothing. Cause what's happening? Because my private life is private for a reason. But how's your love life though? My love life is my private life, and my Jeez. private life is private first. It was nice doing business with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice, but <laughs> no, I um, they they you know for me in terms of you know everyone always asks me when I come home. Ah, uh, that's I a know. conversation. Don't we all get that as you women? Know, like, that's a conversation. Boring. That's a con yeah. well, I, you would think that it's just for women, but every time lately I I been getting the same. I dread going back to my going mm. to my parents' house, and they're just right here in GUS. Mm. Because not because I don't miss them, but the moment I step in there, huh, yeah, like, my mom, mm. my mom. It's always the moms. I want gratitude. It's always the moms. So it's crazy, but yeah, please continue. No, I mean, I think for me, I've always been kind of headstrong in that. I want to make sure that before I um, am with a with someone. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying I am. <laughs> but before, uh -oh. I'm, before I'm with somebody, I really want to be at the place where I can match give and and get what i what i deserve what mm -hmm. i am and what my standard is yes i think it's very unfair of me to want to get into a relationship um not having or not <coughs> you know filling my own cup and not understanding and being successful in my own right by relationship um, do you mean a marital relationship or just any type I of just mean commitment? Any commitment commitment partnership right. um i think it'll be unfair and a disservice to the other person if i am not mentally physically emotionally um uh Academically, whatever it so is. So at, at a rate of a hundred, how how full is your cup? Or my full? cup is pretty full. It's pretty it, full it, now. It always it always gets filled. So we are ready. It always gets filled. So we are ready. I mean, we are ready, but then now it's I've pivoted. Now I'm kind of career focused and making sure that I can um, be the best uh, person for startups and tech that can right, be. Right, and right. it's it's a lot of hours. I mean, I only went to sleep at four o'clock this morning because yeah. I'm still working. Right, right. Um, I'm trying to make sure that we, you know, I'm I'm always on top of my game. I understand. I'm reading. And I'm trying to make sure a business doesn't fail. So um, I also just, I just don't have time. I wake up so early. I go to sleep Jeez, so early. Man, you guys I am just on the go. Oh my goodness. So so I need you to, I need you to separate this for me and possibly demystify it for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. There's, there's a sentiment that says there's a career lady that doesn't necessarily care about love because mm -hmm. she's career focused. Mm -hmm. She's got to grow, develop herself, blah, 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 and all of that. And then up to a point where maybe there's a biological clock that doesn't allow you to do a certain things. And then they look back and they're like, huh, career was good, but oh, yeah. we wasted time. Demystify oh, yeah. that for me. I, I hear that a lot nowadays. Uh. 
What do you make of those sentiments and how would you separate yourself from that? Because I hear you talking about feeling yourself up, uh, being, you know, self-empowerment, uh-huh. right? Uh, the utmost knowledge of yourself before you get involved with any other, any mm-hmm. other person. Mm-hmm. How would you separate yourself as Emma from that sentiment? I don't think it's a comparison and okay. I can't separate myself from that because every woman is unique in their own way. Everyone right. is unique in their own way. And I think right. our journeys are so different that you cannot compare yourself. Right, right. And I think, you know, there's this Instagram page I love following. It's a, a young girl or lady woman who mm-hmm. makes illustrations. And she shows two um, two different parallels of women, right? One yeah. is like career focused um, with a, a suit on with her, with her laptop bag yeah. um, and say successful and happy. And then there's one with a mom who's making food for her kids or something and so successful and happy. So we right. cannot compare. Life is life. And, yeah, life is life. Like, I mean, I can't say that just because I'm career focused, it means that I, you know, women who aren't career focused are lesser than or right, more right. than. Like, no, right, I mean, right. that's my choice and that's where I am in life. And I think career focus and passion and being where you want to be and your standard is different from everyone. You right. cannot compare yourself to somebody else. And biological clock, come on, man. We're in 2022. <laughs> like, we have so much technology out there for women to, you know, if they feel, if they choose, if they want, yeah. to be able to have children. Um, so, so, yeah. so, so do you, what do you say to your parents when they bring that subject up? Is I, that something they understand or you're like, you know what, this is my life understand it or not that's just who I am okay so with my parents is different my dad is is European yes so he's just like yeah whatever but, uh, yeah You're of course of course. he gets it, he gets it. he's <laughs> like yeah, I love yeah, western yeah. men yeah he's like oh, ooh okay <laughs> um, and then my my mom as I'm sitting there you know talking to her she just sits there and looks at me like mm, yeah why are you right <laughs> and then it's just like she just like rolls her eyes and just like oh whatever you right, know? right 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 um, or she tries to give me like a lecture and I'm like ma you know these are my boundaries boundaries saying <laughs> that's how it is so that's, that's I'm a typical listen guys yeah. I get the same treatment as everyone else does when you have conversations with your parents yeah. it's the same so Nothing your mom special. your mom preferred them European and white Oh wow! And you, you remember about what, my mama? Your mom, yeah. Oh, you talking about my mama now? I'm talking about you. Hey, hey. And you remember <laughs> that? You remember that thing? Let me take you back to the first statements that I made, and I said apples don't fall too far from the tree. Do yeah. they fall too far from the tree when it comes to you your prep? Fishing for yeah. <laughs> fishing. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I, I How love, do you prefer your man, Emma? I do not discriminate. I don't look at yeah. race. I don't look at size. I don't look at, you know, what you, those things. You don't Color, look at size? I, text bracket. Emma? I don't look at... Ta- nope. <laughs> Maybe. Text, text. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we need to make sure we can... You know, Live make life generational wealth. Exactly. And I'm at the point where I need to make generational wealth. I'm a bit older. I can't just be out here right. doing random things. But right, no, right. I, I don't discriminate. I think love is love. If I connect with somebody, um, then I connect with somebody. I like that. Yeah. And the person that you've connected with now, mm-hmm. everything is good. Every, every, it's been every, two everything years. may or may not be may good may if I am good. or am not with somebody. <laughs> for three or four years. I'm joking. I, I'm, I'm happy. I am very happy with ah, the person that I'm with. Big shout out. Yes. Gentlemen in here possibly jealous and every other gentleman in B dub and the whole world is like it's Trust Emma, me, he you know? knows he's the lucky man. Right, right? Yes. But And I know I'm a lucky woman. I was gonna ask, yes. I was gonna ask, because gonna, you know, reciprocate. Game time, yep. Emma. Ooh. What makes me happy? Go. Parents. Parents. My parents make me so happy. Oh man. Yeah. That's dope. Taking care of them. That's dope. Mm-hmm. The dopest book that I have ever read is um, I don't know if I can say this, but it's a it's a book by a Nigerian author. I guess I can say because it's a book. It's right. called Capitalist Nigger. Oh, yeah, nice, so brilliant. What? Capitalist Nigger. I've oh, never oh, okay. heard of that book. It's a, a it's a brilliant but book. I think I would be interested. I want I want to yeah. check that out. I have my issues with capitalism. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a great I'll book. I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. As you do with a lot of other things. <laughs> Sorry for using the N-word online. <laughs> yeah, but it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. So, <laughs> guys, I'm, my boss is not going to get me in trouble because it's a book. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a book, book. Yeah. Lovely. My go-to ice cream flavor is? Rum and raisins. Ah, there you go. You yep. and I. You and yep. I. You and I. What That's kind of person is? That's my favorite as, chocolate, though. But tabs. What's, what's going cream. on? Why are you shaking your head over there? Oh, please. Oh. It's horrible. Ah. Ah, the you see what he's doing? Tea. He's just getting back about the whole Instagram mm, he's thing. He's getting back to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of person are you when you are stuck in the thickest of all traffic? In traffic? Yeah. Oh gosh, you know, sometimes I'm so scared that I drive around 
cabs. Yeah. Because I drive myself, guys. I'm a normal person. Right, right. Um, I have slight road rage. Um, <laughs> so if you're ever in traffic, everybody, but on a go high, I am on a traffic and I look flustered <laughs> and I'm just, you know, doing the most. Please forgive me. It's not me. It's yeah. Emma in traffic. And yeah. Traffic man, Isn't it does. Isn't it weird? Because I hear in America, you drive on the other side of the yes. road. So how is that it's, for you? It's not weird for me. I think I'm so, it's like using your left and right hand. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm used yeah. to it by now. Yeah. Uh-huh. I like that. All right. My celebrity crush is. You know, honestly, for the longest, it was Prince Harry. Oh, nah. oh dude, you dude, actually look like hey, Meghan Markle. Oh, oh yeah. man, you do, dude. Right? Now that, oh now man, that zoom in, it. zoom in. Okay, <laughs> yeah, dog, you look like Megan, bro. Do I? I know. I mean, I mean, I think when they got married, I had a lot of people sending me messages like, "You look exactly like this woman." And yeah. uh, dude, oh, that's crazy. Maybe in another lifetime. Maybe. Can I be Mike Ross? Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> My favorite song right now is I don't, I don't even have time to listen to music Listen That's crazy Anything Hold that thought Hold yeah. that thought We have a phone call Gather oh. from you live on air Please give her some headsets Good morning Good morning Morning, morning ma'am How you doing? Fine thank you Give my A Hey, my A has been a, You never call on my show. Oh, There's I something know. I'm doing wrong. There's something I'm doing wrong. I miss it. I sometimes <laughs> miss your show. But I just want to congratulate the young ladies. Oh, thank the young you. women in your show to say that, you know, they are doing so well. It's Emma Warriors. I know Emma. 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 Kima A. Kima Alex Emma. Oh, hi, my Alex. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine in you. <laughs> I'm doing I'm fine well. In you. Goodness well. me. I know. I was glad to hear her voice on radio. And I'm yeah. glad to... I always appreciate young women telling their stories. Yeah. And what I would like to encourage them to do is to write, to document. Yeah. Write your stories. Mm-hmm. You don't have to write a book. Mm-hmm. You can just write what your experiences have been. How do you share it with young women? That's right. And I want to challenge you and say... I have a venue here in Mokolodi. So come, let's call the young women and you share your successes, you share your challenges, you share, especially girls, teenage girls. Yeah. And then you share how best they can navigate this world. It's of a course. Tough world. I will okay. take you up on that, my A. Very Honestly, tough. I'm here for a and few I'd weeks. I'd love to have you guys at the venue. Yep. I, I will, let's talk. We'll let's do talk. something. All right. I'll All take right. you up on it too, my A. Okay. And well done with your show, TK. Very, very well done. Thank You're you so much. Good job. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. Ah, my A, man. One of those amazing women in B-Dub. Yep. Just simply amazing. So, sure. you're telling me about your favorite song and that is a non-existent thing? Um, I, I, I don't think I really have a favorite favorite. Yep. Um, but, you know, I, I you know, since this is going to be a, a bit, I don't know if I'm going to cry again, but I find myself constantly just listening to my best friend songs Sasa who passed away unfortunately oh, and yeah. I will always say any of her songs are my best mm. favorite songs oh, I mean right now mm, I don't know yeah, but, yeah. okay yeah. but what's your vibe though uh, apart from Sasa what's is there a vibe that you constantly um I I love like Deep House almost oh, yeah so oh. I listen to a lot of um, Thievery Corporation I don't know if you know of them yeah they're a great um Band out of DC actually in the international, so I'm I'm a very eclectic, you know, song listener. I like that. Yeah. The one person I really look up the most is look up to the most is my mother. Your mom. I, I had a course. feeling. I had a feeling. My mother. I, I had a feeling. How about you, Kim? That I look up to the most. Yeah. Um, man, does it have to be like a celebrity no, or no, anybody? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, I think I really like uh, Michelle Obama. Obama. Right? Yeah, oh, she's amazing. Like she's yeah. she's dope, and I see a lot of that in you as well. Really? Yeah. I've actually met her once. I died. You have. I literally I'm died. Jealous. Yeah. How was that? She's How so gorgeous. She's so beautiful, and she's mm. tall. She's taller than me. She's, yeah. she's taller than you. Yeah, tall. she's super tall. Obama must be shorter than. Yeah, I don't know. They're both tall. Yeah, I guess at the time he when I met a, her, he had a little basketball stint. Oh That's yeah, crazy. they are. Obama, she was wearing yeah, a little bit of like a short block heel, but mm. she was tall. And Shucks, I, I didn't. I man. think I have not washed that blazer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. Is there anyone else that uh, makes you feel that way that you would meet and you would never wash your clothes because of that? Um, Apart from Michelle. There, I don't know, very few. I don't really like, I don't idolize or people, yeah. people mm. right? Yeah. Um, I think for Michelle Obama, which is. Oh, you had never met me, so hey. Oh, wow. Hey. Oh, wow. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 Too much? 
Too much. Too much. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, but um, no, Michelle is just amazing. I think that's just one of these women who we all look up to, especially yeah. living in the U.S., being a black woman in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. I like that. My pet peeve is snoring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anybody, if, I, I, if I'm in a plane, if mm. I'm like riding the metro, and someone's, I hate snoring. Shots. You know what mine is like hearing somebody chewing. Oh yeah, I, I hate that. Like, mm. why you gotta chew Mm-mm. so loud? Yeah. yeah, and people being nasty to other people. Mm. So, so, so the last time you had a conversation in B Dub and it was recorded was when you were at the Forbes under thirty. Yes. Tell me about. Moments, days preceding to that, who called you, who did what, what was the mandate, what was the mission for you to come on to the platform? Sure. So um I was actually contacted directly by Forbes to be yes. a part of the be part of the Forbes Because under- you're Emma. <laughs> directly though. Yes, yes. So the New York office co- uh, contacted me, but by virtue <coughs> and by way of um Renuka, yes. who is the managing editor of Forbes Africa. Yes. Um and so I had done a you know a couple months before, mm-hmm. I had done Women's Month with her and I which she did a series. They were doing the uh, Africa Women's Month um or celebrations, I think it was something around that. Yep. Uh, and so I met her and we just really clicked and we really vibed and we we you know built a strong bond and she's like Emma I want you to go to Forbes because it's going to be in your country. Yeah. I said, oh yeah, that's right. And she she did her magic and then wow. I was a speaker at Forbes. I like that. And I listened to the whole thing, right? And what struck stroked me the most, um, among a lot of other things that really did that for me, yeah. was when you had sort of said that it's really important for us to be out there so we can bring it back here. Yeah. Paraphrasing, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Um why is that so important for for us to be out there to bring it back here? What do we need to go out there for so we can bring it back here? Um, you know, our country is amazing in its own right. We have so many um, resources that other countries don't. We have free education, free health care. And yes, you can go into the politics of it or like really go into the complexities. But it is yeah, what it is. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You know, I think when I went to the U.S., I found like I was so privileged, right, in my unprivilegedness I was privileged mm. because a lot of students were like struggling that. and having to like I was like I'm getting paid my government's paying for this and I'm getting a stipend like what? and I was really privileged but you know we go out there um, <coughs> because with within the resources we have we do have limited capacity or limited resources as a pool right, right. and I think it's important for us to go out there to understand what's going on in the world in terms of enhancements to technology to infrastructure yeah. to yeah. education um, and the likes of right like we have a great university but also there's like Harvard Yale Oxford and other smaller universities out there that we can really hone into meeting intellectuals meeting other people from across the globe really understanding diversity in a different way um, and I think it's important to gain that knowledge um, gain your grounding your footing uh, and come back and impart that into our country so that we can mm. just be better and greater and uh, and create something for, you know, the young ones who are coming after us. Right, right. So it is important that we in the diaspora understand to come back home, to give to our government that has given mm. so much to us. Mm. Um, and like I said, there can be so many discussions about course, that. But at the end of the day, it has given back to um, given to us. Yeah. Um, because only in that are we able to progress as a nation only in that are we able to um, have the enhancement whether it's economic infrastructure tech um, entrepreneurship investment opportunities only in that we'll be able to understand a part of the world that we may not be as um, a part of being in Botswana Um, so you have different understandings different thoughts of minds different kind of theories that you gain especially with all of us being around of course yeah yeah, that when you come together and you sit down you understand exactly what we can kind of disparage against what we can like understand write up sit at the drawing board and create a structure and policy for our country that can can move forward Um, and I've always covered all the companies I've worked for I think I've, I've tried to always you know brand Botswana in a way so that they can mm. come here and do projects and I've, yeah. I used to come here maybe four times a year back in 2014, 15, 16 right, right. Um, with the companies I worked with to try and like figure out how those big companies in the US can work with Botswana government so yeah. I like that I like that and then last but not least something that I imagine is one of your joys currently mm-hmm. you're an ambassador with Couplings Foundation yes and one of your missions I think is to provide 10 million um Women, African women and young children, yeah. school kids yeah. with uh, freedom, 
period freedom. With period freedom, yeah. Period, what what does that mean? And tell me a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so uh, Couplings Foundation was started by Farah, who is a Motswana woman Dope. living um, in South Africa right now, and she studied in the UK. So just like you were saying course, before, she yeah. came back home and she wants to give to back to the people that gave to her. And so Couplings Foundation was uh, founded with the idea that it was actually the first African-made, um, sourced and retailed uh, period cup for women, for African women. Mm. And it's three cup sizes. You usually get one cup size. And so Farah really went out. She she got all the approvals she needs to. The FDA has even you know, approved her, her right. couplings brand. And she wants to give 10 million women with access to uh, menstrual cups so that they don't have to you know, miss out on school. Yes, yes, Because right yes. now, you know, in the rural areas, girls don't go to school for a month. It's because, crazy, you know, it's crazy. The things that happen to us as women is just mm. kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we're so over these pad runs and pad initiatives. initiatives. Like a pad one, there's so much toxicities in, in pads. You don't understand them. Like it's not accessible. It's it's very, you know, resource heavy. Mm. Right, right. Um, and also just we think of the sanitation around it. It's very unsanitary. And non-reusable. And non-reusable. So right. we are trying to educate women about that um, and give women the freedom to be able to, you know, one, save money um, <laughs> and, you know, two, go to school and yes. understand that this is a period period freedom and it's liberating for you um, and you don't have to stay home just because you're on your period. Emma Arias, so much to talk about. So much. Not a lot of time. Not a lot of time. What would you say? Oh, man, my heart. My oh. heart. What would you say as you lost words? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, from where you're coming from to the middle of your life to where your life is now. In terms of whatever, yeah, you can be as general as you want. Wow. Just speak to the person who's listening to you and the viewer that's watching. Yeah, so to the viewer that's watching, to the person listening to me, I think if I can, if I can take from my life and my journey, is that you have to be determined within yourself, right? I could not have come this far if I wasn't strict with myself. If I did not have mm. the resilience to push through adversity. If I did not have um, the the strings to pull up my boots, the, you know, the socks to the pull socks up my socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I That's didn't, yeah, if, if I didn't really have, you know, the, the that sternness within me to understand my vision, seek out my plan and stick with it. Um, I know a lot of people say, you know, believe in your dreams, your dreams will come true. Listen, at this, life is hard. Sometimes your dreams don't come true. Mm. But if you work at yourself, if you push yourself, if you go through adversities, understanding that you can only go up from the bottom, then you will you will slowly but surely understand um, a peace and a meaning to your life. I think that we really need to understand one that mental health is real. Um, so look after yourself. Look after your insides, your mind, <laughs> your heart, all of those things. Just like you go to the doctor to check up. Of course, yeah. You need to go to the mental health clinic to check up on your mental health um, because that's one thing that will pull you through everything. That's one thing that will that's continuously right. drive this notion of. Um, wanting to be successful, of persevering, um, yeah. of just going through the dark time. It will, it will be your light. Um, and, you know, I just think you know, I've done so much with my life. And, and my A is right. I should I should be documenting this. Yeah, yeah. Not on yeah. Instagram or anything like that. But already I really started. should be. Yeah. You've already started. Because this is a journey that I think young women, for me, it, it hasn't been easy. Because there's a lot of things I had to sacrifice. Of course. I had to sacrifice a lot. I, yeah. In my 20s, I wasn't that Including person. Including love. Including love sometimes, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I knew what I wanted to be. I knew where I wanted to go. And now I'm successful. I'm working in a successful company. Fair, fair, fair. I am making good money. I'm taking care of my parents. And now we're and using that money buying TK breakfast right after this? Or TK can buy me breakfast too. You're I'm making sure. the money. You're making the money. <laughs> <laughs> and also taking care of my parents. So. Oh, yeah, there's that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Emma Warriors, yes. congratulations on Miss Botswana 2010 because I had never had a chance to do that. Wow. Congratulations, Miss World 2010, Thank runner you. up. Congratulations on everything you're doing right now. Thank you. Congratulations being the inspiration that you are to the yes. person that's listening to you, the person that's yes. watching right now. Yeah. And you're a star. Thank How you. How can you not shine? Thank you. Mm. Anyone can reach out to me, honestly, like especially if you're a young company. I work in tech. There I work in go. startups. Hit me up if you need some help. All right. Appreciate you so much for your time. Thank you. Until you and I speak again. So we speak again. Bye. What's going on, YouTube? My name is TK of The Juice 2.0. I'm just here to say thank you very much for checking our video and click subscribe, like, and the notification button for more content just like that.